Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 920, 920, and the topic today, um, it's a spiritual one, it's Sunday. So I'm doing a spiritual chat today because I'm part of my teaching. And basically I <laughs> said, don't be a lampshade. And I, exp- I did kind of a, give you a hint in the title, but I'll explain much more about how you can block your light and how you can unblock your light in a moment. Before I jump into the whole topic, let me explain a bit more about these talks and also who I am, what I'm about, so you have context. My name is Barry Selby, in case you didn't see my name somewhere in this broadcast. I am an inspirational speaker and spiritual guide, which I'm bringing more to the forefront recently, apparently, from what's being guided through me. Um, I'm also a relationship attraction expert. I'm an author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. And I help women create balance in love, life and business. Um, partly because I'm a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine, also because um, well, I, talk about that, I did talk about that another day. I'll make it back to that. But anyway, I started these talks three years ago called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And today we're episode number 920, and I will tell you at the back end where you find the replay so you can catch my broadcasts um, in their full glory. And today I'm talking about how you block your light and how you also may be unconsciously doing that so you can change your paradigm to become more of a light bearer, light presenter, a light person. And I explain what that means as well. And less of a lampshade. <laughs> it was the title that came through, so that's what I'm sharing. So let me start by first saying, um, again, this is Sunday, so it's, I was at Agape this morning, and I'm a, a student of the spiritual teachings, to say the least. And also, in my work and in my journey, I'm clear that light is a word I use a lot in this context, but it's not traditional religious flavor so much, although there are hints of it in the Bible in case you are a God Bible scholar, and I'm, I'm Jewish by background, background, so this is not necessarily my speaking um, with this context, but I want to speak about the idea that if we are all light bearers in the context of spirituality, and a lot of my followers and fan, friends are s- spiritual people, so we think about this, when we block that light, basically we're being a lampshade. I mean, it sounds sarcastic and silly, but we do this. And a lot of times we do it because we forget, but also we do it because we get caught up in the human paradigm, the limited paradigm. And I'll explain that in more detail since I'm on a spiritual vein today. Um, Let me start with the big one, judgment. (laughs) It's hard to go through life, at least I believe it's hard to go through life, not being judgmental in some degree whether it's in the traffic, and if you live in LA, especially on the 405, traffic is an adamant judgment um, invoking experience. (laughs) But so is a lot of things just being in LA. Life tends tends to throw us curveballs, whether it's through relationships, which is one of my specialities, or it's just through dealing with life in general, maybe the way you work or where you live, maybe the environment, meaning like it's raining today and you feel depressed, or it's not sunny enough so you feel upset. We use a lot of things externally to us to put us in a place of judgment. Now, it's not unusual. Yes, exactly, Cheryl. Nice to see you, Marvel Cast. Yes, no no light shade. (laughs) I'm speaking, and and I'm, and I, I had to say this because it was kind of. I had this idea um, a few days ago, talking about this with somebody, and it's like the idea of. So, if you block your light, you're a lampshade. That was too much of a visual. I couldn't, you know, just just seeing people standing with lampshades over their heads. That's kind of the idea I'm giving you, because if you can get this visual to tie together what I'm saying. It's a quick um, par- uh, um, pattern interrupt. It will give you a chance to shift, which is great. So this, this context, this, this language I'm using intentionally is to be like humorous and provocative. So first of all, again, talking about judgment. Judgment pervades everything in our lives, it seems, because we tend to evaluate things negatively, um, either negatively towards ourselves, where we feel less than, or negatively towards something else, so we feel more empowered. Either one are healthy, by the way. But that, that paradigm, that, that um, perspective, is creating more shade and less light. I should say it's more shade covering up our light. That's why I keep using this term, because it is a visual thing. It's like putting a lampshade around. Hi, Patrick. Nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Um, so this thing about being a lampshade, it, it's pervasive, because let me just uh, out. I'm not going to out people personally, but I'm going to speak about some people I saw or I see at Agape, because Agape is my spiritual, you know, I've been talking about Agape a lot. Agape International Spiritual Center in now Beverly Hills, it, LA, is my spiritual home for the last 25 years. I've been going for a long time. But there are people who go there, and people who, when they leave there, don't seem to be carrying the spiritual light with them in an external referenced or a perspective, perspective um, what we're looking for, 
perceptive, perceptive, perceptible, that's a better word, context. They come out of a garpe and they get in the car and they start cutting up traffic or they, they, they walk by the homeless person and they sort of, you know, try to ignore them. And I've done that myself just to be transparent. But the recognition is that spiritual, spirituality, that spiritual perspective, that light bearing um, energy, for some people dissipates two feet outside the door. And this is one of the things, is one of the challenges I think we face, is how do you live spiritually other than on Sunday? Or if you're Jewish, on Saturday or Friday night, because that's another perspective. I'm only speaking from that one because that's where I come from, so I, can, I can't speak another one. So, so the thing about being spiritual, my, um, my flavor that I'm talking about a lot recently, is I'm calling it functional spirituality, not just being woo-woo and, and, and like, you know, praying on Sunday or meditating twice a day or whatever it is you do, for me, spirituality has to be, has to be a way of life. Meaning that, not, and, and, and let, me, let me qualify, so I saw a vision there. It doesn't mean you walk around in sandals and flowing robes and you're, you're, you're blessing everybody you go by. I'm talking about functional spirituality, not woo-woo spirituality. And in a way, yes, it is, um, I'll say it this way, it is kind of spiritual to have a demeanor and desire to be kind to everybody around you. Yes, no argument. But let's bring it home to ourselves. How can you be more compassionate, kind, caring, and spiritual with yourself all the time? And this is where a lot of people have challenge. They can be spiritual with other people sometimes, but they can bless them and, well, they can pretend to bless them. Let's be accurate about it here. But they'll judge themselves because they forgot something at the store or they um, didn't wake up on time or they didn't keep their agreements going to the gym or whatever it was they're doing. People I know out there, and it's not you, of course, it's not you, it's other people, are judging the bejesus out of themselves just to play with words and it's not healthy. Now, as I said, my work around relationship coaching is kind of my main steam, but I'm finding a lot of pieces that fit into more of a spiritual flavor because I watch people in relationships, or should I say people who are not in a relationship now, carry a lot of judgment against themselves. It could come out as a flavor of guilt or resentment too. Hi, Jaladine. I haven't seen you for a long time. In the tradition of engaged Sufism or engaged Buddhism, I think I know where you're going to go, so I, I'm, I'm glad we're talking about this because this does. Some teachings out there are much more um, impactful on daily living, and some aren't. I would say the Western faith is lacking a lot of the impact of daily living, where some of the Eastern faiths, the ones you just mentioned, I suspect where you're going to go with that, because I'm looking at the second half of your comment being engaged is a way of living life. It is about how do you bring your spiritual practice, teaching, training, religious upbringing into daily life. I've seen so many posts on social media recently, which I've also shared as well, so just to be transparent, on like, you know, Jesus' teachings, the Christ, Jesus Christ teachings, and it's done as a, as a meme. You know, it's like, you know, what part of love the neighbor as thyself do you not understand? If you really are a devotee of the teaching, not necessarily the teacher, then would you not be willing to see everybody else as a loving person, no matter how bad or good they appear to you? And yes, as, as Patrick, exactly, how can you be spiritually active within your own self? How can you look in the mirror? Oh, sorry, not how. Can you look in the mirror and see yourself with kindness? Can you look in the mirror and see yourself with compassion? Can you see yourself and look in the mirror? Sorry, can you look in the mirror and see yourself in the right way around and see yourself with love? Hey, Heidi. Happy birthday, Heidi. And I say verbally on screen. <laughs> um, and that's a question. When we, I mean, I'm not going to say I can give you all the answers right now, but I'm going to give these questions to you to play with. Can you be more compassionate, kind, caring, loving with yourself when you look in the mirror? Can you be kind, compassionate, loving with yourself when you get in the car? Can you be all those things when you're making dinner, when you're making food for yourself, when you're buying food, when you're forgetting to set the alarm or you're forgetting to wake up on the alarm or you're not going to the gym when you said you would? Can you be kind, caring, compassionate and loving with yourself? Because in this human experience, making mistakes, in quotes, is part of the journey. Being in the physical body provides challenges, opportunities, comparisons, imitations to judge, because that's the way the world is built. The question is, can you be spiritual enough to discern that that's what it's about, that you don't have to do it? Can you be willing to detach enough so that things like resentment, like guilt, like projection, like upsets, are things you don't have to participate in? So Patrick, you said, you, to be honest, you wasn't, you recognized that this morning. And this is the thing. Part of the journey is recognizing, remembering when you make a mistake to stay, oh, hang on a second, I want to get back to myself. I want to come back to loving, kindness, and compassion. And 20 minutes ago, okay, good. 
this is the thing. I believe in this life because we, very few of us, and I wasn't one, were born from the get-go and raised from the very first time we, we opened our eyes, we were taught that love is the only way. I don't know anybody, as far as I can, I'm thinking of, has anyone was taught that from the get-go? Because our parents weren't necessarily that enlightened either. So we were learned in an environment where we were challenged, not challenged, trained is a better word, to be comparative, judgmental, put down, upset, whatever those things are, because it's part of the human expression. So my invitation to you, my, my suggestion to you, and if you want to get more support, you can reach out to me. How can you, sorry, can you, how, can you focus on be in a place where your um, ability to catch yourself, as in when you start to notice yourself judging or complaining or being resentful or have feeling guilty, whatever that way is, where you can actually get to the point where you go, oh, I, can't, I see I'm doing that. Let me stop doing that right now and let me be more, be more loving. Yeah, exactly, Patrick. We're trained to follow a, a, a form of blueprint. But this is the thing. That blueprint is not, is not controlling you. It's just you've just been... It's been the most, let me say it this way. Hmm. <laughs> this analogy I've shared before a long time ago. I talk about this, uh, someone's going to take a sidebar to explain something about the blueprint piece. Because we, yes, we are, we do appear to be programmed as children how to be in the world by our family, parent, parent dynamic, our, parent, our teachers, everything around us that informs the way we should be. So if you grow up in a culture which is not enlightened and loving, we tend to fall into the habits of the environment. That's, that's the way life is. But the thing is, to switch to the metaphor I was going to talk about, there's a thing I talk about how a mental mindset is is um, comparative to the idea of a cow path. Now, if you don't, and if you don't know what a cow path is, and I know I know enough about this from when I grew up, there's some things about this. Is a cow path basically is the path through a grass field or a or a uh, field of whatever it was, wheat or other things, where there's a there's basically a groove or a cleared parts have been made through it by the, cow, the cows. When cows basically are in fields, they tend to find, they'll start to create an easier way through that they'll all follow by default. So one cow may be the one that boldly goes into a new area of the field and cuts through a certain place, all the other cows will follow it and it creates a cow path. We have the same thing in our mind, <laughs> metaphorically speaking, meaning that we have become so used to a certain paradigm, a certain training, we've got this cow path in our consciousness, which is basically is a routine default way of doing things without even thinking about it. So this idea I'm talking about is to become conscious, aware of this sort of stuff. So you can be functionally spiritual. It's not a default for most of us. And I've been saying, I've been going to Guppy for 25 years, I was in a spiritual teaching for 10 years before that. I'm still practicing and making mistakes and getting better. So I'm not saying I'm perfect by any means, but I'm getting better day by day, which is what I'm encouraging you to look at. So that idea of the cow part in the mind, what I'm suggesting is if you start to practice this idea of being quicker to catch yourself from when you're judging, complaining, bitching and moaning, etc, etc. So you stop being a, shade, a lampshade and become a light. You start saying, you know what? I understand that, but I want to love myself in this moment. I want to care about myself in this moment. I want to be more appreciative of who I am in this moment. That focus, that direction, will start to erase that cow path and start a new one. So those cow paths are not permanently there, like in, like in the fields. If the cows aren't there, the grass will grow back up again, so the path will be erased. You can start a new one, which is more focused on loving, on support, on compassion, on forgiveness, on acceptance of who you are is okay. And that those choices are no longer your requirement. So you don't have to keep doing what you were trained to do or for default. Whatever family you come from, whatever family dynamic you come, you come out of, you don't have to follow that paradigm if it's not working for you. It's a choice. Every single time, this is a choice. And so my invitation to you is to look at that as a opportunity to go, well, I can go that way, or I can try a new way, which is over here, and see what happens. It really is, um, well, say it's simple, but it's not always easy. Because we as humans, again, have a tendency to default. And I know for myself, just to be transparent, because I'm not the professional in this in some ways, is I looked at how life, for me, I go through a few hours and realize I've, I've done things I didn't want to do or I've said things I wouldn't have said. It's like, oh, hang on, let me rewind that. So my, again, my invitation is, is, is how, how quickly can you catch it? Not as a judgment, but as a, like if it takes you four hours to catch this behavior and you switch it, next time it might be three and a half hours. And maybe the day after that, it's going to be three and three quarter hours. But it's like slowly but surely, you shorten the time so you get quicker and quicker and saying, you know what? I'm not going down that path now. I'm going to choose to stay 
presence of the loving to compassion, which to me is what the light is about. I didn't say at the beginning, but yes. When it's about being a light bearer versus being a lampshade, I'm going to keep playing with it, it's kind of a fun metaphor. It means that you're bringing forward more love, more compassion, more kindness, more understanding, more acceptance. Those focuses, those um, energies you bring forward can transform your own life and transform the life of those around you. So that way you become a light bearer. Because the light bearing terminology sounds a bit woo-woo, that's why I don't always like it. But to say, be somebody who's more loving, compassionate, caring, kind, etc., etc., that's good in my book. And that's what I'm about as much as I can be, more and more of the time. Your homework, should you choose to accept, is to play with what I suggested, is to take this on and try it out. When you come back to a place where you start to really care about yourself, from a really humble, loving space, you start to become more caring of other people. Then you become that bearer of lights I mentioned. It's also why I created the self-love meditation, so I'm gonna put that in the comments. My self-love guided meditation is a reflective practice in the mirror that will give you the step-by-step reinforcement, reinforcement is a better way of putting it, to love yourself first. And by so doing that, you become more loving to those around you. That's the side effect, which is a good one, by the way, of loving yourself first, is you tend to be more compassionate, more caring, more loving towards other people. Not just your primary relationship, but everybody. Even those who judged you, even those who hurt you, you can, you can become compassionate to them. You may not want to be around them to do this. You may choose to be distant from them. That's a choice point too. But, but if you can do it from a distance, that's a starting point. If you can be compassionate to the people who hurt you and wounded you from 20 years ago, if you can do that from a distance, that's a first step. And that first step is the first step towards a new way of being in all your relationships. So my invitation to you is take this on for the next next week or so. Let's try that. In fact, you know what? Since it's December and we're getting towards holidays, can you make this your holiday mission? Can you be a light bearer, as in loving, combined, compassionate with yourself especially, and all other people, from now through the holidays, maybe to the end of the year? This isn't easy, I know. I've been, say, I've been on this spiritual path for 30 plus years, and I'm still figuring it out. And I'm, that's one reason I'm teaching it, is because I'm selfish. I'm teaching you to remind me. So just so you know, this is all for me, not for you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's for you, but it's also for me as well. This is not something where I'm saying, I'm the guru on the, on the mountaintop teaching you. It doesn't work. Well, you're welcome, sure. I'm glad you got the message. Thank you. I'm glad it helped you. Take this on. And, if you, and I would recommend if you want to check it out, my self-love meditation will help you as it's a 30-day practice that will keep you focused towards that. So that'll take you through the end of the month. Um, no pun. No, I wasn't planning that, but it does. So focusing on remembering when you're out of alignment and then choosing differently is a first step. When you can choose differently more often to love, have compassion, kindness, etc., you can change the world. And yes, I have a mission here. <laughs> the more people I can inspire to be loving, kind, compassionate, and especially with themselves first, really appreciating who they are, the more the planet will change. And frankly, it's the planet I'm looking forward to being part of. So I welcome you to play, take that on for yourself, to enjoy it, to explore it, and have fun with it. Um, I will put in the comments a couple of the links, which will be my self-love meditation as a reminder, because you can take that on for yourself and really practice it. It will change. It's two audio meditations plus a workbook, which will help you, I won't say discipline, but retrain your mind and your heart to stay open to loving. So check that out. And also put a link in the comments if you want to reach out for a chat, because maybe you want to do some deeper work and you want to work with me, and I want to work with you, if it works out. Work, work, yeah, too much work in there. Um, but I'll put a link in the comments if you have a chat with me, because that's another piece of the puzzle, is getting support so you get through this journey and live another way of living that maybe you didn't do before. If this is new to you, it's a good time to get the help. So I'll put the links in the comments, you can check those out. Um, play with this. And I'm saying play intentionally because if you make it work and hard work, it becomes discipline, it becomes judgmental. Just the act of doing it becomes judgmental, not recommended. So play with this. Have fun with it, exploring it, and seeing how good you can get at catching yourself earlier and earlier and earlier so you become more free and more loving with yourself. This is the path to freedom that I know works better than anything else. And I'm biased about this because I've learned the lesson myself and I keep learning it. All right, I think that basically covers my topic today. Um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I'm going to give you a link so you can find the replay so you can catch them later on. Um, this is my daily Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, although lately they're shifting towards more spiritually centered focus. Yes, Cheryl, play it is, exactly. So this is my daily Facebook Live again at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day of the week unless I move it to another time, but it's every day for sure. So that's why I've got 920 broadcasts. Um, my daily live is on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. You shall play. There you go, Cheryl. Perfect. Um, so again, 
facebook.com slash Barry Silver is my personal page where I do go live at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day. You can join me there when you remember. Or you can click, there's a notification button somewhere around here where you click on it and it'll notify you when I go live. Um, since you may have missed my other broadcasts, I've done plenty of them out there, you can go to my YouTube channel. I should get to that in a minute. My business page on Facebook first, which is facebook.com slash, slash Barry Selby author. You can like my page and there's a broadcast on there. But not all of them. Facebook doesn't save them all there for some reason. Excuse me. But they are on my YouTube channel. So again, uh, you, you can go to me. You, you, you can go to my YouTube channel. Let's try that in English. YouTube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. You can subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine where all of these live from newest to oldest. You can scan through, find the ones you, that work for you. Um, you can search by keywords, etc., etc. It's much easier to find there because frankly, YouTube's better at managing your videos than Facebook is. And when I said that on a Facebook Live, they might won't like that. <laughs> so again, I put links in the comments for my self-love meditation, which I recommend highly. Um, the workbook alone will change your life if you do that, as well as um, a chance to reach out and chat with me. But take this on. I'd love to hear from you. If you have any thoughts about this, please put them in the comments. If you do want to practice this and get back to this video and make comments later on in the week, let, you do, let me do, do that too. So I'd love to hear from you how this goes for you. This is your opportunity this week to play and to explore how to be more loving, kind, compassionate, and light-bearing yourself so you can be more light-bearing to other people. I think that's about it. I appreciate you being with me. Thank you for watching. And please share this with anybody who should see it. And uh, let me know how it goes. I always, as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon. Bye.